I do have uh, a little bit of interest and a little bit of background in cities uh, through uh, the time, about half my life, that I've spent in my adopted city of uh, Chicago. And so I do have some sense of the issues that are uh, being confronted now uh, in that city and uh, whether or not American cities are models uh, that we've, uh, poor models that we've ex exported uh, to elsewhere in the world or not, I think uh, anyone who gives it a moment's thought recognizes immediately that uh, many American cities face uh, grave uh, challenges uh, which they're seeking to address, particularly of water. Uh, for example, Chicago sits next to one of the greatest bodies of fresh water uh, in the world, yet in the vast, expanding, sprawling suburbs of Chicago, uh, there are many problems with uh, those individuals who are not allowed to take water uh, from the lakes and who are therefore very much concerned about the shallow water aquifers that sustain those sprawling uh, suburbs. Similarly, while uh, Chicago and indeed other American cities had the benefit of uh, far-sighted planners, people like Olmsted and Burnham, who set aside large areas of land uh, to what today we might call green infrastructure, uh, the question is being asked now, where are the Olmsteds and Burnhams of the 21st century? Who are the people who are thinking about uh, setting aside uh, land in cities, not only to provide basic ecological services like the recharge of uh, uh, aquifers or the absorption uh, of floodwaters. In terms of general comments on the content of the meeting, I, I would really only uh, have three, and they're really very general, uh, based on uh, things that I've picked up over the last uh, uh, day and a half. Uh, there's a good deal of emphasis on, on data, and several people have waved around this uh, wonderful book that's being compiled um, that really pulls together a, a lot of information, as we've heard, some of it already known, some of it put together for the first time, but all of it presented in a new and compelling and compact uh, way. You'd have to be pretty cynical to say that we don't need that data. Of course we need that uh, data to really understand uh, what's going on, but I think uh, one of the things that we would try to encourage, certainly in our students, is also to question uh, the data uh, at all times. And um, to think about how that data might be refined in the future, uh, because obviously this is a, a, an ongoing uh, process. So two things that, that come to mind is, uh, first of all, um, uh, the obvious limitations of the census data that we've heard talked about. Uh, today, the extent to which that census data uh, really captures what's going on, really captures the full dynamics of uh, this seething uh, ecosystem that we, that we call the city. Um, so that would be one, one question, is, is how is the data that we have available to us now really capturing the full dynamics uh, of the situation? So that's at one scale. But at the other scale, uh, I would say that, that one thing that... Um, uh, uh, we would hope that our students go away with is a sense that, uh, that these cities, even though they occupy a tiny amount of land, have a hugely disproportionate effect uh, globally. So they have a massive impact nationally, but they also have a giant uh, impact uh, globally, uh, producing a vast amount of the uh, greenhouse uh, gas emissions uh, on a global uh, scale. So cities, the, uh, if you like, the teleconnections of cities extend uh, out over their, hint, not only their immediate hinterlands, uh, but also globally. So these cities are parts of uh, global processes, and the question is to what extent uh, do we understand uh, the global processes in which these cities uh, are embedded. A common theme today that we've heard a lot about is this urban-rural uh, issue, the urban-rural uh, connections, uh, the benefits of uh, uh, and the distortions that come from being urban but staying uh, rural, um, and uh, the gradations that exist in the peri-urban uh, areas that relate to uh, definitional or, or governance-related uh, issues. And I think uh, a general topic that, that uh, we all should be concerned about in the future is, is the extent to which uh, these cities that we've been discussing here are 
all basically sustained uh, by resources flowing in from, else, from elsewhere. Uh, whether it's the energy coming from the coal mines scattered around India or whether it's from the coal mines that are now exporting coal from Australia uh, to sustain uh, these cities. Whether it's the water that we're abstracting out of the rivers with their sources in the Himalayas or whether it's the food that we're bringing in from the agricultural uh, hinterlands. So the cities and the rural are connected through a whole range of processes and uh, those processes are, are certainly part of uh, understanding the, uh, the complexity of, of what's going on uh, through these, these very rapid changes. 